right. All right, thank you for joining everybody. I'm so excited to see so many people excited about Plastic Free July. This is amazing. Uh, my name is Marie Niemeyer. I'm the Public Education Manager at Recology Sonoma Marin, uh, which is the waste management agency that manages all the materials for Marin and Sonoma counties. And then with us will be, um, I've collaborated with Sloan Pagal, um, and I'll let her introduce herself. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Sloan. I'm the Zero Waste Program Manager with Zero Waste Sonoma. And like Marie said, we've kind of been tag teaming this Plastic Free July uh, event series to kind of get you guys involved and engaged and uh, reduce some plastic as much as we can here in Sonoma County. Yes, um, and we wanted to offer this webinar as a part of the larger Plastic Free July uh, campaign. So it's part of a larger event series. And first we thought we thought it might be a good idea to give a little bit of background about Plastic Free July. So it is a campaign um, that has become a global movement and it actually originated out of Western Australia. Um, a woman named Rebecca Prince Ruiz, uh, the founder of Plastic Free Foundation, along with her small local government team, started the campaign with the vision of a planet free of plastic waste. So the initiative has gained momentum over the past 10 years and is considered one of the most influential campaigns in the world now. Um, the goal of Plastic Free July is to provide resources and ideas to help you and millions of other people around the world to reduce single-use plastic waste as well as find solutions for plastic pollution. Um, that way we can have a cleaner and healthier world, which I'm sure everybody wants. <laughs> so Sloan and I got together and we gathered a group of amazing local zero waste experts uh, to offer their expertise and further this movement. So I'm just gonna give a little overview of who we have joining us to present today and where they are coming from. So first we are gonna have Emily Harris, who is one of our waste zero specialists at Recology Sonoma Marin. <laughs> Hi, Emily. And uh, she will be discussing zero waste education and plastic reduction methods. And then next we have Jana Wong, the co-owner of Refill Madness, a local refill shop based out of Sonoma. Hey. Um, and she will be touching on plastic alternatives and reusables. And then next we have the lovely Sloan Pagal, who is the zero waste program manager with Zero Waste Sonoma. Um, which is the local government entity for all things related to waste. And she's going to be focusing on the polystyrene ordinance mostly and touching on the reuse co coalition as well. And then next we have Liz <laughs> Bortolato, who is the legislative chair for the Sonoma County Local Task Force on Integrated Waste Management. She will be discussing uh, state legislation. Next, we have Brianna Hansen, co-owner of Heritage Alchemy, which is a local zero waste shop based out of Santa Rosa. And she's gonna zone in on plastic-free alternatives. And then last, but definitely not least, is Mary Minot, who is the own, um, owner of Green Mary, which coordinates zero waste events, as well as the executive director of the nonprofit Good Works. Um, she's going to cover events, repair, and other helpful public zero waste practices. So before we jump in, another reminder, because I see that quite a few more people have joined, this is being recorded right now. So if you would prefer to not be on the recording, go ahead and just turn your camera off and you're good. Um, we're going to have each presenter speak for about five minutes each, and then we're going to go into the Q&A. So try to save all of your questions for the end um, so that we can have the presenters present, you know, fluidly. And I would ask that to mute yourself just while the presenters are presenting because the background noise can be 
um, distracting. So I thank you for doing that. And without, um, I'm sorry. And then after the presenters will go into Q and A and you'll be able to get all of your questions answered. Um, and with that, I'm going to hand it off to our first presenter, Emily Harris. Thank you, Marie. Let me bring up my presentation here. There you go. Yes, so yes, I'm Emily. I'm Waste Zero Specialist for Recology Sonoma Marin. We have the mission of reducing waste sent to landfill and recovering resources. So we also set up waste zero programs. This is actually a catering company that I was able to help them set up composting and recycling programs. We do education about um, the California compost and recycling laws and about composting in general um, and its importance in sequestering carbon and reducing our greenhouse gases. Very, very important to compost. We also educate on recycling, so um, which also reduces our greenhouse gases. At Recology or Samoma Marin, we do recycle plastic, but we can only recycle rigid plastic containers like bottles, jugs, tubs, things like that. Um, we can't recycle any of these others. So at the bottom, you can see there that we can't recycle small plastics, soft plastics, styrofoam, mixed material plastics like coffee cups. Um, all of those. So on the side, you can see that I put in some educational facts on, on plastic, like the carbon dioxide emitted from PET, which is the plastic used for beverage bottles, um, the US CO2 emissions for plastic incineration, um, and only about 8.4% of plastic is recycled. Like, for example, all those plastics we can't recycle there at the bottom of those pictures, the styrofoam, all that. So that's all stuff that we can't recycle. We actually get a lot of plastic contamination at our facility. So plastic bags, hoses, film, bailing straps, the plastic straps, they all get caught in our spinning discs and our sorting equipment where we have to shut down our facility for a long time while this poor bloke has to go in there and cut all that out. So you can still see that there's still so much plastic that has to go to landfill. Um, now, we talked about some plastic that we can recycle. In fact, when we recycle one ton of the plastic that we can recycle, we save so much oil, energy, electricity, our precious landfill space, not to mention all that water you see running there. All that stuff gets saved when we recycle. Um, now, if this is how much resources we save when we recycle it, let's just think about how much we save when we don't produce plastic at all. See, the problem with plastic is that it has huge detrimental effects to our planet. Um, this is actually a really awesome documentary I highly suggest called Trashed. <laughs> but basically we have to remember that plastic pollution hurts our ocean life. So you can see there's a, a turtle stuck in some plastic there at the bottom. There's a plastic straw stuck in a turtle's nose. Plastic bags get confused for jellyfish and get eaten by animals. Um, on the bottom right there, you'll see an albatross that has passed away its belly just full of pieces of plastic. But not only does the plastic pollution hurt animals, but it hurts people. So small plastics, when plastic gets into the earth, it breaks down to smaller. So plastic pollution um, is an issue. So paper, glass, and metals out of all the other things you can recycle, if they were to end up in the environment, it's not good, but they are nowhere near as bad as plastic. Plastic is a man-made material and every piece of plastic that is ever made is still here today. The issue is that it just gets smaller and smaller and smaller until it's cellular size. They can't even filter it all out of our water anymore. It's in our rain. They're finding it in the snow in Antarctica. Plus, when you think about a glass bottle or an aluminum can, those can always be recycled infinitely until an into another glass bottle, into another can, where plastic often gets downcycled into something no longer recyclable, like a plastic bag, and it can only be recycled so many times. So thinking about all that, the best thing that we can do is to reduce and reuse. And really what's better is if we can find reusables that contain little to no plastic. Um, we have three, at, at about three wonderful resource, refill stores, excuse me, in Sonoma County that can help you <laughs> um, find all kinds of stuff like this to avoid the plastic and to avoid creating waste in general. Um, any of these things, we have glass containers. Um, reuse is just the best thing you can do. And the reduced part of that is not taking it if you don't need it, not buying it if you don't need it, anything like that. So if you took anything away from my presentation, 
it's to remember that reuse is the best thing that you can do. But let's also remember that none of us are perfect. So just remember that any small changes that you can make whatsoever is what's going to make a difference. And that's what's going to save our earth. Thank you. Wonderful presentation. Thank you, Emily. Bravo. Um, so next we have Jana Wong, who is the co-owner of Refill Madness, again, a local refill shop based out of Sonoma. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Marie. And hi, everyone. Thanks for coming today. Um, I'm excited to talk to everyone and share more about our refill shop. We're here in Sonoma Valley. We're called Refill Madness. And uh, we just opened up about a little less than six months ago. But I'm so excited to be here because a refill shop is such a great place for people to come. There's a lot of things we do that help people reduce their single use plastic use. And um, it's a good way to reduce plastic and we have a lot of reusable items. So I'm just gonna touch on those things. How um, coming to a refill shop, how we help you achieve these goals of reducing plastic and reusing items. Um, <clears throat> so let's see, let me go back to my share. Okay, so when you do refills, refills, it's kind of a new concept around here, actually. It hasn't been done in a while or very broadly, but it's coming back. We have three shops now in Sonoma County, mine being one of them. Doing refills is essentially bulk shopping. So one large container instead of many small single use containers is kind of what happens. You know, we get a bulk thing and then you bring in all your containers from home and then, um, you know, this reduces the number of bottles that are being created and used and put back into recycling or just tossed out into a landfill. So we have bulk shopping and the products we carry are everyday products. These are things that people just use constantly. Laundry detergent, shampoo, lotion, soaps, sunscreen, hand soap, um, and this is just a few of them. We have tons of cleaning products, you know, glass cleaner, all-purpose spray. We have powdered products like OxoBright. We just have all these things that people buy in plastic bottles. So instead of buying new plastic bottles of your cleaning products, your soaps, shampoos, you can come to a refill shop like mine, bring your own containers, and you're able to reuse your existing containers. You're not buying a new one. And those virgin materials are not being created because um, you're reusing a container instead of buying a new bottle. So this is how uh, refills really help out when it comes to reducing plastic is people can reuse their containers over and over again. Doesn't matter how old your plastic bottle is, it's gonna last, these things are sturdy. So let's reuse them. <laughs> um, and the other thing about a refill shop is our goal here is also just to make it easy and make it affordable and accessible for many people to do refills. Um, you know, the more shops like this we have, the better, because the more people that start doing this, it's going to reduce the number of bottles that are getting tossed out. So, you know, we're conveniently located, the prices are good, and we just want this to be something that many people can start doing on a regular basis. It'll really help. You know, if many people do it, that's even better. Um, the other thing we do besides refills is we sell zero waste products. So what is a zero waste product? Well, this is a lot of things. Um, one of the things that we sell are reusable items. So things like cleaning brushes for your home, dish brushes, um, all sorts of, um, they're made of wood and natural fibers instead of plastic. That's something that we sell that's a zero waste item. Also reusable items, uh, reusable cutlery. That's a big one that always ends up in the ocean. Um, reusable cutlery, of course, you could use any metal fork, but the nice thing about getting like a bamboo set is you can take this to go. It's easy to take on the go, it's light. Um, and these things, you can just keep it in your purse instead of getting a plastic fork when you go out to eat. So again, reusable straws, reusable bags, food wrap, cloth napkins, just all sorts of things that we get, like when you get takeout, it's like they all add up. So getting reusable items is a great way to reduce your single use plastic use. 
And so we sell all those things here, like bamboo toothbrushes and just snack bags, things like that. So another zero waste product would be those reusable items and natural, naturally made things that are biodegradable instead of plastic. Um, another zero waste product that um, is kind of gaining in popularity that's really good to use are things like shampoo and conditioner bars. Instead of using bottles of shampoo and conditioner, we do have refills on shampoo and conditioner, but there is still a bulk container. There is still plastic in the mix. So if people really want to go plastic free, shampoo and conditioner bars are the way to go. Dish soap bar is the way to go. We have amazing package free deodorant. So all these little plastic containers that we use regularly, think about how much it adds up every year per person, you know, deodorant, plastic deodorant things. So um, these are some of the other items we sell, package free, biodegradable. And um, it's just, you kind of have to like make a switch, but once you do actually it's pretty easy. And then you're producing so much less plastic every year. So um, all these zero waste items, reusables, they really help to cut out single use plastics. And, um, you know, refill shops also just raise awareness of reducing plastic. I love that I put out a sign about tips on reducing plastic about we have this refillable. I think it just draws attention to the issue. That's the other thing too. And so um, we always like to draw attention to the issue, help local people see that, hey, we should switch over to reusables and refills. And um, it's, you know, it's just something that I think everyone's paying more attention to. So here's a few tips to reduce plastic. You know, say no to use single use plastic and get reusables, make a zero waste kit, use bar soaps, and of course do refills. So thank you so much. Those are some things about our refill shop. And um, yeah, thanks so much for watching. Amazing resource right there in Sonoma. So check it out. It's amazing. Thank you for that presentation, Jana. Um, next, we have the lovely Sloan Pagal, and she is the Zero Waste Program Manager with Zero Waste Sonoma. All right. Well, I'm going to touch on um, something that some of you might not know about, um, and that is our polystyrene foam and disposable disposable food service wear ordinance. Um, and this has been something that's been in the works um, with our agency for a couple of years now. Um, and also just in case some of you might not know, um, uh, Marie did mention, but we are kind of all things solid waste related, including household hazardous waste, um, organics, and then kind of everything recycling. Um, so we do a lot of education and outreach and, um, and then the ordinances as well. So we kind of if you're familiar with the carry out bag van, um, that was us. The polystyrene foam ordinance is kind of taking a different approach and we are kind of going jurisdiction to jurisdiction um, to help them get this implemented uh, throughout the county. So it's pretty clear why this ordinance is needed. Um, first of all, polystyrene foam is a type of plastic that is particularly troublesome because of its lightweight characteristics, uh, very brittle, it breaks down in the environment into those microparticles that you saw on Emily's slides. Um, and once it gets out there, we really can't get it back. Um, so it also, this ordinance also helps support the state 75% uh, waste reduction goal, um, as well as our county zero waste and climate action goals. Um, you know, there's a lot of alternatives that are available for polystyrene foam at this point, and uh, we want to facilitate the transition to more reusables, um, as well as the compostable and recyclable options um, that we take here in Sonoma County. So far, we have about half of our jurisdictions that have adopted the ordinance, um, starting with Sebastopol, they were the first. Um, and more recently, the city of Sonoma is adopted this year. So we are working, you'll see that um, we've got all the other jurisdictions have scheduled their first hearings. Um, and then with Petaluma, they have adopted the polystyrene ban part, but they haven't adopted the uh, disposable foodware part. And I'll kind of cover what's in this ordinance. So first it pro prohibits the um, distribution and use of polystyrene foam food service wear. 
it also prevents the sale and um, oh, the, the retail sale of this product. And that includes um, you know, foam coolers, packaging products like peanuts, um, as well as the food service ware itself. It also requires the, the disposable or single use for food service products to be locally recyclable or compostable instead of polystyrene. Um, it requires the food establishments to only provide those items that you see there pictured on requests only, um, on the customer's request. And the most recent thing that we added is that um, because of serious health concerns related to fluorinated chemicals that are used to um, prohib or prevent um, oil and water from going through those fiber items, um, they're often injected into that. So these are becoming more and more uh, an item of concern for public health. And there's in fact, um, at the state level, there's a consideration for banning PFAS in food service ware as well. So we're kind of ahead of it, but it's just something to, um, to think about. The other thing is that it, in order to kind of encourage more reuse, we have included an optional takeout um, fee or credit system where the restaurant um, or food service establishment could either credit uh, a customer to, for bringing in a reusable container um, like a coffee cup or a to-go box, or charge a takeout fee for those single-use items. Um, and we'd like to see that. And we also kind of put that in place because we know that if they're currently using a polystyrene foam option, there is a kind of an associated cost of moving to something that's in a compliant. Um, so that, that was also a way, a way for um, to help cover those potential costs. This is our campaign really, again, going back to the reusable is best, um, recyclable is great, fiber compostable is great, and then polystyrene is just going away. Just some more kind of educational items that we've created here along those same lines. And one thing to note is with the fiber compostable options, um, our facilities do not accept those that have kind of that shiny lining, and that is called a PLA. So we cannot accept products that have that shiny lining, which is why we still allow those recyclable options here. Um, again, recyclable is okay. And then here's the part where you guys come in. Um, so this ordinance is going to be a complaint-based reporting system. So we're not gonna go out to every single restaurant and say, what type of food where are you using? You know, we're gonna fine you a thousand dollars. I mean, that's not, that's not the, the plan here. So we need folks in the public to let us know if they're out to eat and they happen to go to a restaurant that's using polystyrene foam first and foremost, or they're kind of fall or they're just providing those alternate or those accessory items without your request, um, or they're using a product that um, you know is not recyclable or compostable locally. So this form is available on our website. It's live right now. Um, you can just fill it out and we get that. And that's how we know how to provide that technical assistance. And then one other thing that we've added um, is again, to facilitate more of a transition to reusables. We have um, created this grant, a micro grant program for any um, establishment that wants to provide a reusable option rather than a single use um, item for let's say for dine-in. Um, and so there's $250 available um, for each restaurant. They just have to start by filling out this form and um, we'll be able to reimburse them for up to 250. And that's it for me. So I'm gonna pass that baton over to Liz and she's gonna talk about some state legislation. And really quick before you, you take over Liz, thank you for that amazing presentation Sloan, great job. Um, I noticed that a couple new people have come into the meeting. So if you can just save your questions to the end, we're gonna have a long Q and A period and we're gonna answer all your questions, including the ones that are in the chat. I've noted them, so don't worry, they will get answered. Um, but yes, please take it away, Liz. Okay, good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm going to go over uh, just three of the bills at the state legislation, uh, at, in state legislation process right now uh, that have particularly have to do with zero waste. Um, there is more. Um, however, you know, 
it, it can be a laborious process. Um, the first one I'm going to talk about is AB 962, and the person in the highlight, Cam Lager, is the author of that particular bill. AB means it's an assembly bill, so our bills can originate either in our state assembly or our state senate, and so that's what the AB and SB mean. Um, this particular bill is interesting. It is um, tr trying to enable the possibility of returnable beverage bottles. Um, that currently is not, uh, we're not able to do that in our state system because the um, bottles that go into the recycling system are required to be crushed. And that happened to be in the actual initial bill. And so that's what this bill is going to change. So we can have the possibility of returnable beverage bottles there has actually been a local um, beverage, returnable beverage bottle pilot here in Sonoma County just this past spring um, run by a company called Conscious Container. And so the idea is to encourage more refillable uh, bottle possibilities in California. And this bill has a lot of support um, at the state level at this point, because it's a very easy bill. Um, so I expect that we will see this passed. It's currently gone through the entire assembly process, assembly side of the house. It's in the state side of the house at this point. And I expect that, I'm guessing that it will, it will be passed um, probably this year, which will be this fall. It'll go onto the governor's desk. Okay, next. Uh, AB 1276, uh, Carrillo's, um, a re Representative Carrillo is the author of this particular bill, and this is kind of a follow-on to the um, to the uh, straws upon request idea, except now it's foodware, unnecessary foodware upon request, and so it's going to statewide require people not to, or I'm sorry, business owners not to just automatically put a lot of single-use items. Uh, with takeout food or, you know, with, you know, their, their dining. Um, an example of this might be Taco Bell putting in, you know, 45 packets of hot sauce when you order a burrito. And um, I personally always find that a little egregious, <laughs> but it includes a bunch of things like, they don't list absolutely everything, but examples are cocktail sticks, napkins, forks, spoons, and knives, the single use ones. Um, condiment packets, you know, those little condiment, uh, you know, containers, plastic containers, um, items like that. And as you guys know, that for this past year, there's been a drastic increase in the amount of this um, material that's offered to everybody, whether they want it or not. And so this will save, frankly, save businesses money. It should be an, an easy thing to do. Um, and I think this has a fair amount of support. So we, the customers, will request that which we want. Okay, going forward. Uh, the third bill I'm talking about today is SB 343. And the SB means this originated in the Senate, the California State Senate, not our National Senate. Um, this is actually, you know, I looked at this bill is actually a surprisingly complicated bill, but to give you like a shortened idea of what's going on, um, you know those chasing plastic or chasing symbols on the bottom of of plastic, like a plastic beverage container that have, you know, a little triangle with an arrow, and then in the middle is a number. There's a lot of confusion among people that that number means that it's recyclable, which is actually not true. That number identifies what kind of plastic resin it actually is, and some of those are not recycled. Um, presently. As a matter of fact, frankly, few of them are recycled currently, um, and certainly broadly, maybe only one or two. Um, so this is going to take the resin number out of the middle of the changing, or I'm sorry, the chasing arrows symbol, unless it's actually recyclable. There's another element to this bill that has to do with how, um, how products are labeled, whether they're labeled recyclable or compostable or biodegradable. They're going to tighten down on what those definitions are. So it's actually quite a complicated bill. Um, there's lots of support. There's little opposition just because of its complexity and because there's um, companies that are concerned about what this means when products are you know, um, US-wide, not just contained within California. But 
um, it's an ambitious bill and we will see, we will see some version of this probably pass. Now our current session is what they call a two year session. So there's a lot of negotiation between the authors of the bill and then various people that raise concerns or raise uh, points that need to be taken into consideration as they write these bills. Uh, but this gives you an idea of what they're looking at at a state level. Um, and uh, it's a lot of good work. I know the state legislators really want to make a dent in the plastic pollution crisis, and it is a crisis. We're all ingesting so much more plastic than we realize, um, not to mention waste and its, and its um, place in the entire world of the climate crisis. Um, however, Without going into a monologue on that, let's go to the next slide. Now, what you can do um, is- Liz, yes, um, yes. we are running a little bit over on presenters time. So if you might wrap it up, that would be, that'd be awesome. Okay. Um, if you can reach out to your legislators in support of these bills, and there's a, a website right here to find out who your legislators are and anything is helpful, a phone call, an email, and that information is available right here on this slide. Um, thank you very much, I'll stop now. Thank you, I just wanna make sure we get through everybody. Um, so that was an amazing presentation, lots of good information. Uh, next we have Brianna Hansen, co-owner of Heritage Alchemy, um, which is a local zero waste shop based out of Santa Rosa. And um, we are running a little over. So if I can ask the next presenters to keep it tight, that'd be great. <laughs> you got it, Marie. Take it away. <laughs> okay, so very quickly, everybody. Hi, um, my name is Brianna. And like Marie said, I'm the co-owner of Heritage Job Me. Um, our name comes from our desire to pass on a more beautiful uh, life to future generations through the magic of sustainability. Um, so we provide alternatives for a lower waste lifestyle. Um, our philosophy is that we aim to help reduce our community uh, consumption of single-use plastic. This is actually a photo of our shop here. Um, everything in our shop is designed to be recycled, reused, refilled, or composted. Um, an aspect to our shop is the refill station, much like Jana has her lovely refill madness in Sonoma. Um, we have a small refill section inside of our store filled with hand soap, dish soap, laundry detergent, all-purpose sprays, uh, shampoo, conditioner, toothpaste tabs, kind of anything you could need for your kitchen or bathroom care. Um, our top tips for a lower waste or plastic-free lifestyle is definitely use what you have. The best way to reduce waste is to just create less of it, right? So take your time using up your plastic bottles, uh, bring them in to get to a refill station to get refilled. There are now three of us in Sonoma County, which is wonderful. Um, and I will remind everyone that over 40% of all plastic made is packaging. So reducing our online shopping, stop trying to reach for the plastic wrapped goods at the grocery store, um, figure out a way to bring some of those things with you on a day-to-day -day basis, and that'll really help. Um, we, again, our tips for plastic-free lifestyle here, reusable utensils. These are all items we sell at our store. Um, you'll see here that I have my metal straw regularly uh, around. I find that it actually helps me drink water more frequently, which is great. Um, but metal straws, uh, we have reusable coffee cups. Ours are ceramic and food grade silicone. And then we also have those are stainless steel um, utensils inside of a silicone washable package. So you're able to keep that with you on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, my personal favorite is the food grade silicone bag. Uh, we sell a lot of stasher bags in our store, um, but anything that helps get rid of those Ziplocs, which can take up your kitchen. <laughs> I even uh, went on my first airplane ride for the first time in a year and a half and used my stasher bag as my toiletry bag. So I put everything in the clear TSA compliant bag. Um, there's so many good uses for, for these food grade silicone bags. That's, they are an investment up front for sure, but like most things, um, they're worth it in the long run. They pay for themselves in the end. And then for me, I noticed that the number one place for most people is bathroom upgrades, right? The bathroom plastics are out of control. It can be so difficult to get rid of those. 
Um, but we sell bar shampoos, bamboo toothbrushes, natural loofahs, washcloths, toothpaste tabs that we even sell in bulk. So you can come in and refill from your own containers. And we're just really here to help make sure that you can limit the plastic you bring into your life. Um, I will say overall, it's not just on us. Don't get discouraged. All these lovely people are doing a, mil a million wonderful things to help and we're all in it together. So everyone can, a little bit helps. I mean, we're all in here. So we're doing our best, right? So we say low waste lifestyle, not zero waste because it's all about progress, not perfection for us. So with that, I'll let Marie take it away. I love that. It's about progress, not perfection. <laughs> Thank you for that awesome presentation. Uh, so next we have last but definitely not least is Mary Minot, owner of Green Mary, which coordinates zero waste events as well as the executive director of the nonprofit Good Works. And I am going to be sharing her presentation. And um, again, we are nearing, we are getting close to Q&A. So we're going to keep this tight and get going on the questions very soon. All right, Mary, take it away. Thank you so much, Marie and Brianna on the uh, zero waste. We're aiming for zero waste at public events. Um, Green Mary has been focused on uh, minimizing waste at public events around the San Francisco Bay Area for 21 years now. And we're back online, yay! Next mm -hmm. slide, please. How we are doing this. Next slide, please, Marie. Oh, sorry. There we go. Um, going, whatever we're doing in our lives, we're rethinking everything that we are in the process of naturally doing by focusing on making less waste. So heading out the door to go to a special event, you will be bringing your own refillable water bottle, making sure there's a water refill station on the um, at the event, bringing your own utensils, your own cup, napkin. Napkin is the easiest thing in the world to bring along. It's not plastic, but it's still reducing waste and saving trees. Um, a lot of vendors are letting us use our own containers now. And one way to further ensure this is to have a little stash of craft paper. So you can bring your tiffin or your plate and hold it up, put your craft paper down, and then the vendor spoon or a serving utensil won't touch your plate. So that's a way to ensure passing health code. Um, and you can also think about what you're going and even ask, what are you going to be serving me in and what's going to come with it? What are those food accessories that you're naturally going to um, be providing me? And then pass, make sure to say no to the plastic utensils because you've got your own. You don't need anything that you can minimize accepting draw the attention to the food vendor also to cut down on that automatic inclusion. We're reusing everything possible, recycling everything that is possible. The rot is for making sure that everything that is organic goes into the green waste container and then we repeat. And next slide, please. We've been really focusing on plastics in our conversation here today. And several people have mentioned that every piece of plastic ever made still exists. By rethinking what we're doing in our day-to-day, moment-to-moment activities can greatly diminish the plastics that go out into the world. Um, and we really focus at Green Mary on talking with the producers and the vendors to make sure that they are minimizing plastics on their end. And I really appreciate the uh, the slide, the half that talks about the naturally relying on a plastic fork when we could have brought our own, all the work that goes into our entitled lifestyles rather than just taking care of ourselves. Next slide, please. Still on this, the utensils. That's going to be the easiest one for all of us to do. And we've also been focusing here today on progress, not perfection. When I got my breakfast burrito this morning, I thought it was just going to be wrapped in an aluminum foil with a craft paper wrap. And instead, out of my sight, it came in a, a paper clamshell with utensils and a solo salsa. 
So I could have asked, what's it going to be served in? What's it going to come with? And headed it off. I even had my own napkin. I could have asked them if they could just place it onto my napkin. But what I could have done wasn't what I did do. Now I can focus on what I can do better the next time. And that's what we're all up to. Next slide, please. And we've also been focusing on this today, um, plastics being a major source of greenhouse gas emissions. So by being zero plastic warriors, we're also helping to reduce our collective eco footprint. Next slide, please. A lot of emphasis here today has been on being sure that everything that is organic that we can compost goes into the green bin. And that's one thing that we focus on as well at Green Mary um, at the special events that we do about 85 to 95 percent of the event waste goes into either the green or the blue bin and our waste is greatly diminished. We're greening the Stern Grove Festival for another seven weeks in San Francisco for seven to eight thousand people every Sunday and shockingly, not shockingly, that black bin, the landfill bin is 99.9 percent .9 plastic stuff that we cannot do anything with. We go through every bag, hold it up, look at it and say, nope, it's got no other life. And that's what's filling up the black bin. So we're really working on talking with the attendees to make sure that they're minimizing what they bring in. And I can stop it there because we're gonna have lots of Q and A time. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> Can we just give a round of applause for all of our presenters? That was so much good information. And I feel like it was a, a wide breadth of, you know, every topic. So thank you presenters. That was very, very impressive. So now if we can move on to our Q and A, um, I'm going to be asking, you know, throwing the question out there. And then we can have our presenters, you know, answer it and discuss it. So you can get all of your questions answered in the next 15 minutes or so. Um, and I anticipate us maybe going over a little bit, but I also want to get as many answered as possible um, in this time. So let's see, the first question we have um, is actually for Jana. Uh, do you accept donations of clean plastic or glass containers for people to refill with? And that's from Paige. Yes, we do. So if you bring in already cleaned containers, um, nothing that has like a really strong food smell, please. <laughs> because, um, you know, sometimes containers do still have a scent lingering there. But yeah, if they're clean and they're reusable, definitely bring them in. We sanitize them here in like a hospital grade sanitizer and we put them out for free for people to use if they didn't bring a container. Okay, awesome. Uh, next question is from Elizabeth. Uh, she said that I see plastic bag recycling bins at Safeway and Target, but I understood that recycling plastic bags was close to impossible. Are plastic bags being recycled from those or is it a reuse thing? And I have an idea that maybe Emily is the best person to answer this question or Sloan. <laughs> Thank you, Maria. Yeah, I was thinking either me or Sloan possibly. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's definitely not a reuse thing. Um, when they're asking for those plastic bags back there saying that they are recycling them, um, definitely check with them that they actually are recycling them. I've heard in the past, um, you'd have to definitely check with them about that, but I know that it's it's definitely hard, especially if people are bringing back the plastic bags wet or with food debris in them and stuff like that. It makes it impossible for them to recycle and they just have to throw them away. Um, but yeah, if they're able to find markets, it is hard to find soft plastic markets, but um, some of them are having that. I don't know if you have any more information on it, Sloan. Um, you know, we, last summer, we sort of did an audit. Um, we had a wonderful intern that um, called around to all of the locations that were listed on the plastic film recycling webpage. Um, and so I think that our, our zero waste Sonoma .gov, um, finder is pretty up to date as far as the locations that do accept that. But I agree with you. I mean, it is tough um, to know for sure because we're not on site following what happens to those bags when they do, um, you know, when those bins are full, the idea is that they would get bailed up and sent to a market um, that wants that. But 
it is a low grade plastic. So um, the cost or the, the price is probably not that much. Um, obviously the best option is to just bring your reusable bag and, um, and try to reuse those plastic bags in your home um, for other purposes if you can. I would just like to add to that. Um, it seems like the question was asking about, you know, plastic bag recycling in your blue cart. So just to make it clear to everyone, plastic bags are not okay into your blue curbside cart. The reason why is uh, there's a difference, right? Your the plastic bag recycling bins at the supermarket that's just for plastic bags. So if we assume that all plastic bags in that bin are clean and dry, they're not mixed with any other recyclables, then it's really much easier for them to get recycled. You know, they're shipped to a secondary recycling facility where, you know, they're melted down and made into new products. Whereas in your blue curbside recycling bin, you have um, a lot of different kinds of recyclables like cans, right, uh, that could get your plastic bags dirty, number one. But number two, at the facility, when they're trying to sort out all these recyclables, um, cans from the paper, from the glass, um, the bags get tangled up in the sorting machines, and that is a big problem. So that's why, you know, those recycling plastic bag recycling bins at the supermarkets, they do actually, you know, usually do recycle those bags, and it's a lot easier versus if you throw them in the uh, curbside blue bin, they are not recycled and they actually cause a lot of problems. Um, so just wanted to point that out. Definitely. Thank you, Zinsi. Zinsi is also with Zero Waste Sonoma, so <laughs> a wealth of knowledge there as well. Um, yes, the plastic bag, that is a very big challenge in the industry. So it's a bit of a hot button for us. <laughs> um, so the next question is from Liz Larson. Um, so this is actually for um, Zero Waste Sonoma. How much uh, does it cost? Oh, how much it costs the citizens of Sonoma County to haul all compostables to another county for processing? And when is composting coming back to Sonoma County? Okay, I can take that one. Uh, so it's... <laughs> A bit of a complicated issue. I'll try to make it short. So um, at this point, with costs, we uh, if we break it down by household, the cost to export organics to composting facilities outside of Sonoma County uh, really comes down to cents um, for each household. Uh, when Sonoma Compost uh, closed down back in 2015 and we started out hauling all our organic material to composting facilities outside of Sonoma County. Out hauling was the cheapest option um, at the time, and it still is. Uh, and you know, the problem is there just isn't a facility in Sonoma County that is big enough to accept all of the residential material to be composted. So this is unfor unfortunately the option that we're stuck with right now. Uh, for your second question about when is composting coming back to Sonoma County, at this point it is um, unclear. We, I don't know if maybe some of you have heard, uh, we were negotiating with a private developer to build a new composting facility in Sonoma County, but unfortunately uh, those negotiations stopped because um, the private developer had trouble financing the project. And so we're kind of back to square one, unfortunately. And we're, um, Zero Waste Sonoma has not had a public discussion yet with our board about what we want to do and what our next steps will be. Um, but it is possible that we will issue a new request for proposals for developers to come into Sonoma County and build a facility in the next few years. Um, but right now we don't have a specific timeline. Yes, a very complicated topic as well. <laughs> um, Thank you for that answer, Cincy. Um, so the, we have questions flying in. Thank you so much for asking your questions. The more you, that we can do that, the more we can learn from each other. So the next one is, do you have, um, this one's from Ruth. Do you have any relationship with Preserve Give Me Five program? They are on the East Coast and use number five plastic containers to make other products. Whole Foods was a collection point, but I think not anymore. It seems crazy to mail 
plastic across the country. Does anyone have thoughts? I haven't heard of it before. Um, I have used it in the past. The um, COVID has kind of disrupted their mail-in program. Uh, I have not checked it as of late if they are accepting the plastics again. Um, I agree that it's kind of crazy that we need to ship our plastics halfway across the country <laughs> to get them recycled. Um, but I can say that number five is usually a rigid plastic and that is accepted at Recology Sonoma Marin. So if you live in Marin or Sonoma counties, that plastic is likely getting recycled. Um, because there is a market for number five for us. But again, there's a lot of recycling facilities all over the country that might not take number fives. And that's why there's a gimme five program. Um, but yes, those are my thoughts. I did it as well, because I hated the thought of it not getting recycled um, before I knew Recology Sonoma Marin took it. So um, the next question um, is from Dawn. What resources are at the manufacturer level that gives them alternatives to plastic? I'm not sure if we really have anybody in that space. Um, Liz, do you have thoughts? Um, I, I was just going to uh, offer this thought. When, when you take the option of plastic off the table, you will be amazed at what kind of innovative ideas people come up with. And to just give you one example, um, in the place of, of uh, the foam that goes inside packaging around like televisions or wine bottles, um, there are companies that, that came up with the idea of making that out of mycelium and compostable uh, sawdust or um, like nut um, holes and things like that. The point is, is they could literally grow this material, which was completely compostable into whatever packaging shape needed to be made. So the point isn't that we need to do the manufacturer's job for them. When we eliminate this as an option, it is absolutely unbelievable what comes out of the woodwork. It's been too cheap and too plentiful and too destructive for too long. And, and people are becoming very aware of that, but there, there will be uh, unbelievable options. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> um, so the next, I guess, question comment is from Carol. Um, she mentioned that she's actually taking a plastic pollution class, which is amazing. Um, and she learned that the problem really lies in plastic production. Yes, that is definitely a big root of the problem, um, which is where she's directing her attention. And then she says that she eats a lot of berries and they all come in packaged clamshells. Yes. <laughs> I've asked grocers to stop um, this packaging and no go. Any suggestions on how to get the grocers to stop using clamshells? Free the veggies. <laughs> Love that. Um, I will say really quick, I this might not work for every scenario, but I like to go to the farmer's market and then I have my own like um, reusable pouch thing and then I have them dump the berries in that that doesn't always work but it's an option um and um does anybody want to speak to maybe you know producer responsibility that's a big well, one well, that that's kind of a big thing I feel like we could have a whole other webinar about that <laughs> <laughs> but um we can, we can just remind folks that those clamshells do get recycled um, through our hauler here. So um, if, if you can avoid it, that's the best. Um, but if you, if you have to do it, um, also try bringing it back. Um, I think, was that Mary earlier that said she has already tried doing that or? Emily. Emily. Yeah, so I just like Marie was saying, um, I, I try and get it as much as possible in the farmer's market. You can't always, but when I do, I've, I've definitely had like the strawberries that come in the green baskets. And instead of recycling those, which I could do even better than that is reuse. 
So um, the, the strawberry person will take those basket back, clean them and reuse them over and over, which is awesome. Or like Marie said, you can dump them into your own container and they can just keep them right there. Um, but yes, you're right. We, we should, um, and I think Mary said this, that being um, outspoken about what we want is the most important, just like you were saying in your comment that um, you've told them it's not something you like. We just have to keep being vocal about it's not something that we like because we can't always necessarily get our berries from a, from a farmer's market, but the grocery stores do come in the clamshells and the, the second best thing is for the clamshell to go into the recycling bin. And I just want to add that maybe, um, Carol, you could ask your grocery store to start um, having, you know, uh, providing local berries instead, because if these berries are coming from other states, there's not a lot of options to ship them in packaging that isn't that clamshell, right? So uh, the grocery store is going to say, like, if we want to keep coming, uh, keep buying from this particular producer, like, it's, there's not really an option. We have to use these clamshells. So if they can switch instead to a local producer or local grower, then um, maybe they can do away with that packaging. All right, um, it's 12.58, so I'm just gonna try to zoom through a couple more questions. I see we have quite a few, but, um, and then just close. Um, we might go over a little bit, but keep going. Um, really quick, Delinda has a clarification question. Um, the 8.4% figure of plastic that is recycled, is that in the US or Sonoma County? That's a good question. So I use that in my presentation just as a, a to show how much plastic can be recycled. So I got that figure from the EPA's website. The EPA says they use data from the American Chemistry Council and the National Association for PET Container Resources to measure how much of uh, plastic is recyclable. And so they said the overall amount of recycled plastics relatively small, but 8.4, um, looks like maybe 8.7% recycling rate. Um, so it sounds like maybe that was like in the United States where that that um, um, was done, that study was done, but they're estimating it's about that size. Great. And the next question is from Robin. I think this is directed at the refill stores. Um, do you have a list of products, uh, brand specific that you can refill? Um, maybe somewhere publicly accessible? We have on our website. Oh, great. Yeah. So if you, our website is Refill Madness Sacramento because we share with our sister store in Sacramento. If you go to Refill Madness Sacramento, you can click on one of the um, drop down menus about products and you can see the things we carry in the store. Perfect. I wanted to share that I used the refill store in Sebastopol a couple of days ago and did my shampoo. And um, it was just a wonderful process and not expensive at all. So it was a double win. Uh -huh. Let's see. Actually, this is, this is Robin. And I did check that website on Refill Madness and it lists the products that you sell, but it doesn't list any products that I might already be used to using. Do you refill anything other than your own products? Sorry, which, uh, so we list the products that we carry in the store, which, which are you? Well, maybe I misunderstood. Do you, do you refill any products other than the ones you sell? So if I'm already using a certain brand of, of uh, laundry detergent that I, I find effective or, you know, kitchen dishwashing detergent that I find effective, do you refill those bottles or do you only refill the ones of the products that you sell? Yeah, we, we have certain brands that we carry in our store, and those are the ones that we can fill your containers with, but you can bring in any container. But yeah, some of our brands for like cleaning and everything are Ecos or Azure Clean, um, but we don't carry every single brand. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. Um, so I think people are having to drop off the webinar because we are at 101. Um, and I'm gonna capture these questions because I think there's some really, really good ones to get answered. Um, 
but before everybody, I just want to respect everyone's time. So we're going to wrap up here. Uh, and thank you for all of your questions. Um, but uh, Sloan and I just want to say really quickly a couple of things you can do for the remainder of July or beyond July. Um, and that this webinar will be available um, on our Plastic Free July website, which I can grab right now and copy into the chat. And on there you will, because I know somebody asked about um, a list of the presenters. So on there you will find a list of the who presented today. So you can find out more information about them. Um, and then uh, Sloan, if you want to talk about the screening we have coming up on July 30th. Yes, um, we would love to invite everybody here um, to a film screening of the story of plastic. Um, it's a great documentary that kind of details all of the issues that we kind of already know about, but it does offer some solutions and a little bit more insight on kind of how we got to where we are and how we can move forward um, with less plastic in our lives. So um, please come to that. It's July 30th, a Friday evening. It starts at 7 p.m. at Somo Village in Rohnert Park. It's a free event. Um, we will do about an hour of tabling with some local nonprofit organizations um, and zero waste businesses in our community and then start the screening at 820. So um, bring a chair. We'll be, you know, providing the screen itself and the movie and all of that. But um, it would be great if you could bring your chair and um, bring yourselves and kind of celebrate the end of Plastic Free July and continuing to live with little plastic in your life um, moving forward. Um, and then Marie, did you want to just remind people about the cleanup maybe? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And really quick note on story of plastic. I know I forget who was asking about um, uh, producer responsibility. So that's the whole stop them from making it <laughs> thing. Um, so uh, story of plastic does speak to that a lot. So it talks about um, the different companies that are invo involved with the production. So it's um, not just the consumer side of it, but also the manufacturer side of it. So that's a really great um, resource to learn more about that. Um, and I also just wanted to, something just came to my mind while we were all talking about that is a uh, break free from plastic. That's another really great resource where you can actually do a brand audit when you clean up. So you can make sure that um, the companies that are producing the most, you capture that data and feed it to this organization and it'll help fight those um, companies and producing so much. So I can pop that in chat as well. Um, but yes, for the remainder of Plastic Free July, um, we urge you to go to the Plastic Free July website um, you can still make the pledge at Plastic Free July's um, page, which is on our page that we created. Um, and then also, if you wanted to do a cleanup, I know I started mine uh, yesterday at Stinson Beach. Um, you can easily do that. Uh, use the Clean Swell app to document it or just snap a picture. And if you show that picture or the app data to us at the screening, we can give you a prize. Um, so that's always nice. But yes, I just, oh, I see a lot of thank yous coming in. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending. And thank you again to our wonderful presenters. And we are so grateful that you care about this topic and are trying to make a difference in the world. So with that, we're, we will say adieu. And I hope you have a really great rest of your day. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye.